What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. This is the Earthmaster here on this Halloween day, October 31st, 2022. It's about 1.25 p.m. California time. And uh, yes, it is Halloween. Getting ready to go out and do some trick-or-treating tonight. 2.3, the latest earthquake out there around the west coast of California. Taking a look at the last 24 hours or so of earthquake activity. Going to drop that down just a little bit because we have uh, too many earthquakes up there on the globe. Uh, due to it being over the 24-hour threshold. But we're still seeing quite a bit of activity ramping up here around the Pacific Plate. Uh, adjacent plates, I should say, around the Philippine Plate and up around the Java Trench. Uh, specifically around the, Phil the uh, Pacific Plate. Very minimal. Uh, except for a little bit of activity around the New Zealand area and the Kermadec Trench. Most of the movement around the West Coast there, around the uh, Pacific Plate. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on out here around the west coast and we're lighting up a little bit notice that guys things are getting somewhat active along the west coast and it kind of started yesterday had some activity right smack dab on the san andreas fault the southern segment yesterday right around the rightwood area 3.0 uh, 3.0 came in uh, about nine almost 10 o'clock last night did see a little bit of uh, aftershock activity following that three-pointer and a couple other scattered earthquakes throughout the, the evening. But here within the last hour, things lighten up in specific areas. For one, the Garlock Fault Zone. 1.3 right smack dab on this shear fault. Don't see a whole lot of activity out there, but today it's moving. Uh, also 1.9 over here outside the Santa Barbara area. Some earthquake activity there within the last hour. Also along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. 2.1. Uh, right around the Pinnacles area. The Bay Area getting in on some activity as well within the last hour, right on the Hayward Fault. All these uh, different fault systems here showing some movement today. 2.2 at 4.2 kilometers deep. Also up into Northern California getting a little bit of swarming activity. Well, I wouldn't really call this a swarm, but a couple twos. Three of them to be in fact. Um, looks like the majority of this earthquake activity occurring couple yesterday and one within the last hour now Mount Lassen does sit within this area and this earthquake activity roughly about five miles to the southeast it is at the northern end of the fault system here it's called the Butt Creek Fault Zone Stover Mountain Fault yeah kind of an odd fault system name but it is what it is there I didn't name it and that does extend down here into a couple different segments south of Chester south of the Lake Almanor area and uh, it is believed to have been on uh, either the Butt Creek Fault or one of these other segments where a 5.7 struck um, back in 2013. You guys remember that? 2013, uh, May 23rd, 5.7. Kicking up there around the Lake Almanor area. Now, I did feel that earthquake um, when that kicked in that year. Uh, and it is believed to be on at least uh, uh, the that fault system I mentioned there, the Butt Creek Fault, on the southern branch of it, it looks like, which sits kind of just down here a little bit. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. You know, this, this area is very forested, mountainous, and I'm sure there's a couple other fault systems up here that are not mapped. But uh, specifically, this activity kicking up just right there at the northern end of that fault system today. So just kind of watching it. A little bit of movement out there on the North American side of the plate boundary and the Pacific side. Things kind of uh, things kind of active today. Up into the Pacific Northwest, the movement outside of Mount Rainier, 2.1, and Mount St. Helens. A little microquake up there. Uh, and here in the valley, in this little valley, well. I should say underneath the valley because that's down there about 21 kilometers deep. 1.7 near St. Paul, Oregon, underneath this area. Now, I believe that's a subduction zone earthquake. Pretty deep movement for that area. I'm going to bring up just the 2.5 map and above, see if we're missing out on anything. Um, there's that three-pointer on the San Andreas Fault. The Calaveras Fault Zone looks like it had a little bit of activity off of it near Pleasanton, although those two earthquakes there... Um, looks like two of them are from yesterday. One 
overnight at 2.8 here along the uh, Calaveras fault zone. But definitely uh, sparking some interest out here with this uh, earthquake activity. Yellowstone National Park, they got a few earthquakes listed up here on the map. Looks like about 12 of them so far. Uh, let me turn off the bell. Hopefully I didn't keep that bell on too long. I always forget to uh, turn it off, but uh, good thing I checked. Earthquake 3D bell. 12 earthquakes. All right, let's see what we got here for the Yellowstone overview. Looks like a little bit of swarming kicking back up around the Yellowstone region. Overnight, we've seen that uh, right around bedtime or so. Looks like uh, this morning, quite a few earthquakes popping up there in a little rapid sequence. Looks like this is coming and going a little bit in the terms of the swarming department. It's been kind of an ongoing thing here for uh, over the past couple months there at Yellowstone. With only a day or two of hardly any, any movement. Now these are not big earthquakes whatsoever, but it is a swarm and it's been ongoing, that's for sure. Um, nothing big overnight looks like. Largest one looks to be a 1.7. Now they should be coming out with a yellow, Yellowstone monthly update. Uh, I don't believe that's come out yet. I am going to check it here just to see if they put out a update on it. Uh, as far as the swarming goes, I kind of like to key in and see what uh, see what's up. October first was the last update, so tomorrow, uh, possibly in the afternoon time frame, we should have a new monthly update here from the USGS and in regards to the uh, earthquake activity as well. I'm kind of curious to see what they have to say about that. All right, back to the USGS map here. It looks like a little activity around the New Mexico and Colorado border early this morning, about three o'clock, 2.2 outside of the Trinidad area. And outside of Pecos, Texas, got some movement as well. Very typical out there in the oil fields. One earthquake outside of Tulsa. Don't see too much earthquake activity up there, 2.0. Uh, at about 10 kilometers deep, let's take a look and see uh, what we got for some satellite images here. Kind of curious. Looks like it is uh, just out, well, actually within the town there, underneath somebody's house out here. Kind of crazy. Uh, U.S. hazard map. Let's see what they got Tulsa in. Not really a seismically hazard area around the Tulsa region. In fact, it sits uh, kind of outside of this boundary, this little uh, this little fault system here across the area of, of Oklahoma, or the Arbuckle Mountains, Wichita Mountains over here to the west. Got some uh, areas of interest here, but uh, Tulsa definitely doesn't really sit in that zone, so kind of an odd earthquake. Keep an eye on that. Uh, Elgin, South Carolina, this was yesterday here. 2.5. Notice it's in the red. That's indicated that it was felt pretty broadly um, from many folks. And it looks like the Did You Fill It reports here. Uh, I didn't fill it. That was a little bit too far. Um, hold on a second here. Let's see what I'm doing. We'll bring up this map here. Looks like it was felt uh, over a small area, but a populated area. Elgin, of course, 189 epicenters or uh, 189 responses from folks filling, uh, filling that little earthquake, a little 2.5, but uh, it was somewhat shallow, 3.1 kilometers deep. Uh, nothing further since that earthquake uh, yesterday. Puerto Rico area seems to be calming down a, a tad bit. Not a whole lot of swarming kicking up there yet. It was yesterday a little bit. Looks like it's died off. Getting that swarm of activity right smack dab into the Peru Chile Trench once again. Some earthquakes kicking up here overnight and early this morning here. A couple fives. Uh, we were watching this area over the last couple days. I want to bring up the uh, seven days 4.5 and above and show you guys this cluster of quakes. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it's a pretty good one. About 20 earthquakes or so with 4.5 magnitudes and above over the last seven days. Now the largest of the sequence of quakes looks to be a 5.9, but I can't be sure, can't be certain that this is just not all a bunch of four quakes to something much bigger. 
the Perucelli Trench here is very capable of producing some very sizable earthquakes. Uh, it is a major subduction zone here with a, um, a large accumulated slip rate, uh, average yearly slip rate. I can't remember exactly what it is, but uh, it builds up pretty quickly here as far as strain goes. And uh, that area is swarming again. So watch that pretty closely, folks. Uh, up into northern Peru, looks like a 5.5 coming in about the same time as this activity uh, this morning. 143 kilometers deep, though, for this 5.5 up here. Getting some deeper adjustment, adding on some further strain and stress up here at the subduction, uh, subduction zone level. 5.8 along the West Chile Rise. Now this is a divergent boundary down here, okay? Now, when you think about that, that's a spreading of the oceanic crust underneath all the, uh, well, of course, the water down here, the Pacific water, Pacific Ocean. This plate system here is kind of pushing apart. And when that happens, that adds further strain here along the, uh, the Nazca. This is the Nazca plate and the South America region, the subduction zone right here. So if you look at the timestamp right here, this was 0114 uh, this morning. And this activity ramped back up. Uh, I would say, well, we had a couple looks like yesterday there too, but it did kick up after uh, that movement down along that divergent boundary a couple hours later. So things are increasing along this region here. Um, following this activity out in the uh, divergent boundaries over here around the South Sandwich Islands a 5.0 that one coming in uh, roughly after all this activity here in the South America region just getting a lot of shuffling and movement here around these plates got to watch that pretty closely uh, considering all that swarming we've seen look at California though goodness it is lighting up like a Christmas tree red and orange Christmas tree that is uh, definitely uh, definitely worth watching today. Halloween earthquake? You never know. We've had Easter earthquakes. We've had Christmas earthquakes. We've got uh, all sorts of you know significant dates that uh, are in relation to large earthquakes. Alaska? Not a whole lot going on. This is very typical though along this area. No major swarms, no major movement up there in Alaska to take note of. Around the Big Island, little spotty activity throughout the region here of the Big Island. Mauna Loa, Kilauea, and down here around the Pahala area. All seeing some activity, but nothing here within the last hour. And haven't really seen any noticeable change there at Mauna Loa. Uh, far as that um, earthquake swarming that we've been watching. Alright, uh, there's that train of activity here throughout the Java Trench. So yesterday, <coughs> if you remember... We can probably go back the last three days or so uh, on day, t pretty much day one. We've seen uh, a lot of activity here through uh, the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea area, and portions of the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, and all that activity kind of shifted pretty significantly over here to the west uh, around the Himalayas, India, and portions outside of Bangkok here. And today, uh, it kind of looks like, at least for day three, um, looks like one of those earthquakes there, 4.3 into the Java Trench. Looks like this is starting to fill back in considering yesterday's activity and that push, that westward push of activity here yesterday. Maybe seeing uh, another amping up of movement across the area. I don't think it's finished yet. And the Java Trench, that's another one. Another player of uh, producing some very large earthquakes. So a couple fours, a couple fives throughout the area. Yeah, that's some, uh, some considerable movement, but nothing like it could do uh, as far as that large earthquake goes. Mongolia, way up north. Looks like that one coming in at 4.5. Early this morning time frame. Further west, though, uh, you know, it kind of came to a halt right about, uh, let's see, right about India area. Right across the Himalayas, looks like things pretty much halted right here through the area. And um, just kind of back building some pressure from the east here, working this way towards the west. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet for now, except for that one South Sandwich Islands earthquake. 
5.0 early this morning time frame. Man, that's just crazy. A lot of activity. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We checked out Yellowstone. Let's see. The trimmer last night. 147 epicenters of trimmer uh, right around the Olympia area, just outside of Seattle, here to the west. And a little bit of movement down in the southern end of the Cascadia. Haven't really seen too much movement there along the Cascadia, uh, at least according to the USGS, but good thing I checked this uh, Canada, Earthquakes Canada map because it looks like it's somewhat active up here. Now, not specifically on the Cascadia subduction zone itself, but man, uh, these plate boundaries here to the west of the Cascadia do play a major part in buildup uh, of pressure, further pressure in this area. And uh, it's nothing to overlook. It looks like we did have an activity, uh, 3.5 early this morning time frame. Actually, UTC date. So that's going to be from yesterday uh, at 1031 0318. Yesterday uh, afternoon, it looks like uh, the latest quake shows a 3.5 uh, overnight into this area. Uh, this is going to be the Explorer plate. There's actually three separate plates here the Explorer plate which kind of ends right about here where the hand is. And then the Juan de Fuca plate, the larger of the three microplates. And then down here, right about this bend southward, southwestward is where we get the uh, Gorda plate. And this whole area is just kind of being shoved and pushed underneath the North American plate kind of in this fashion here. I need to bring back up my Epic pin here. Uh, I got it on the new computer and I hardly ever use it. <laughs> I need to bring that in. That way I can show you guys kind of what I'm picturing here in my mind and the diagrams of, of stuff that's playing through my head right now. And the hand doesn't really do that much, right? So we'll add that back on there. Some movement way up into the Yukon area as well, it looks like yesterday. Uh, a little 2.7. So things are on the move around the west coast. I want to check out a couple volcanoes out here and see what we got. Um, before we get to the PNSN network, I want to check out Mount Lassen and see what we got for activity. See if some of that movement around Mount Lassen is showing up on the seismographs here. So pretty cool site to check out, usgs.gov, programs, uh, VHP. Here's the Lassen Volcanic Center, which currently sits at green. Nothing unusual going on. But down here we got some seismograph stations, and I'm sure this is where... Well, maybe. What's going on there? Maybe this is where they'll let me see it. Wow, look at that. From August 31st. Okay, let's go check out another one here. One of these have to be active. Come on, guys. Now, okay, this is recent. But where's our earthquakes at? I know for a fact. This could, let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. There's earthquake activity kicking up there around Mount Lassen. And it's within the vicinity, very close to um, Mount Lassen area, to those seismographs. So there's no doubt in my mind that these two-pointers are going to register across the Mount Lassen area. But, I, goodness, where is it? <laughs> are we um, cutting these out? Are these where they're supposed to be and they're just now blanks? Let me, uh, let me look at a different seismograph station here. That's a little on the fishy side. Where, oh, holy smokies. Wow. If that is Mount Lassen, that is scary. Goodness. That's a lot of earthquake activity there at Mount Lassen. No wonder. I'm glad I checked this. I would say there's a lot more than two or three earthquakes kicking up there at Mount Lassen, wouldn't you? Now, these are definitely well-defined earthquakes. I know, I know, obviously, we watch you guys watch these videos a lot, right? I've looked at these graphs for many, many years, and these are what earthquakes look like here. Um, I don't think it's outside interference. So, let's go and check here. Um, I'm going to screenshot this here real quick. Well, I'll get it here in a second. Keep that window open. Don't want it to disappear. 
So we checked out that seismograph sta uh, seismograph station there. Um, that's about the southern end of the flank of the volcano there at Mount Lassen. We'll check some of these other seismographs and see if they're getting the same stuff. Come on now. now let's see here. I've seen p portions of it. There we go. Oh yeah. There's some of it in there. Um, it's kind of in the shadow of the seismograph readings, but it, I can definitely see some of it in there. It's kind of overblown, uh, that seismograph station is, but I can still see some of that activity. Uh, this one here is lacking that activity. That's a little suspect there when they do that. It's just blocking out all the uh, larger size earthquakes. It's not even picking up anything. Uh, let me check over here by Manton. Uh, there's some of those earthquakes definitely registering over here on this seismograph station as well. So we got some type of swarming going on. Uh, I'm pretty 100% convinced now just by looking at this one uh, that we got some type of swarm going on at Mount Lassen Volcano in Northern California. So on that note, let me check out the GPS measurements here real quick and see if I can... Uh, where my GPS stations are here. Stand by for just a second. Let's see if we can bring this up. I don't quite have all of my um, all of my GPS thumbnails here set up on the new computer, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm definitely working on it. Let's see where we're at here. I have a couple different ones, and gosh darn it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it here throughout the hundreds and hundreds of bookmarks that I have out here. Oh, man. Maybe. Yeah, I think this might be one of them. Let me see here. Uh, it's not. This isn't one of the. Well, I might be able to check some on this one, but this isn't my normal one. That I'd like to use. See what we got here around Mount Lassen. Uh, see, these guys. I don't really see anything specific up here. Now there is a couple different um, options to view GPS around here as well, if they are operational. But sometimes they look like this. You know, it can't. Even, it's missing half of its data, and it only goes back through June 2022. Um, let me look around, see what we got here, folks. Stand by. See, that one's missing some data as well. That's not very professional. Don't these guys get paid by taxpayer money? Hello? Where's our quality control? Is this an audit that I'm doing? I guess maybe it is, huh? You guys aren't doing a very good job there with keeping, keeping these GPS stations up and running. Goodness. Missing half its data. Ah, oh, December, June, um, hard to tell with this. These are little plots there of uh, vertical uplift, it looks like. And there's definitely up uplift going on. But I'm going to, uh, I got to find that one site that I normally use. I'll come back to this a little bit later tonight. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But uh, definitely, folks looks like uh, Mount Lassen is swarming. That's a swarm. That's, that's a pretty good one, too. So, I will report back tonight, see what I can find. Um, and of course, bring up my normal GPS stations here and see what we can uh, figure out. Again, this may not just be specifically related to volcanic activity. This could just be a lot of fault stress build up in this region. Um, but then again, the USGS is only th showing three earthquakes here. And there is a lot, a lot more than three earthquakes. I could probably count who knows what. You know, if you want to count all these other ones in here, it could be well over 100. So we'll report back on that tonight, folks. Um, after a little bit of trick-or-treating with the kids. And I um, hope everyone stays safe out there. Make sure you guys... Uh, you know, bring bring some flashlights and whatnot for the kids, some glow sticks. And uh, if you're out driving around, got to watch out for those kids. Or Sometimes they cut in between cars, parked cars, and just a good day just to stay at home if you're not, if you don't have to drive around. Less traffic out there, the better. 
Uh, anyway, happy Halloween, folks, everyone out there. And I will, uh, um, I'll post a couple pictures of me and Missy Mimi's on our YouTube account here. And uh, you guys can see what we're dressing up as <laughs> for Halloween. All right, guys. We'll catch you back here tonight with the uh, complete update. Peace out.